Okay. All right. Now, Cora, that's number 16, verse 1. Now, Cora, the son of Isa, the son of Kehat, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Aviram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. So this is the tribe of Reuben that, that rebelled, okay? They took men and they rose up in face of Mo Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 men. They were princes of the congregation, the elect men of the assembly, men renowned, And when Moses heard, oh, I'm sorry, first three. And they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourself about the assembly of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spoke unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, In the morning, the Lord will show you, we, the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he may choose will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire in your censer, and put incense upon them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord do choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moshe said unto Korah, hear now, you sons of Levi. Is it? But a small thing unto you that the God of uh, Israel both separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the Mish Mishkan of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And that he had brought thee near and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi with thee. And will he seek the priesthood also? Therefore thou and all thy company that are gathered together against the Lord and as to Aaron, what is he that he murmured against him? And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they say, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou has brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? But thou much... Thou must need make thyself also a prince over us. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us an inheritance of field and vineyard. With wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moshe was very rough and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moshe said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy congregation before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take ye every man his fire pen, and put incense upon them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his fire pen, and 250 fire pen, that also and Aaron, each with fire pen. And they took every man his fire pen and put fire in them and lay incense thereon and stood at the door of a tent of meeting and Moshe and Aaron and Korach assembled all the congregation against them unto the door of a tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spoke to Moshe and unto Aaron saying, separate yourself from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their face and say, oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and will thou 
be rough with all the congregation. And the Lord spoke unto Moshe saying, speak unto the congregation saying, get you up from about the dwelling of Korah, Dathan, and Aviram. And Moses rose up and went on to Dathan and Aviram and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke unto the congregation saying, depart, I pray you from the tent of these wicked men and touch nothing thing of theirs, lest ye be swept away in all their sins. So they got them up from the dwelling of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of the tent with their wives and their sons and their little ones. And Moshe said, hereby ye shall know that the Lord had sent me to do all this work and that I have not done them of my own. If these men die the common death of all men and be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing and the ground open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them and they'll go down alive unto the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have despised the Lord. And it came to pass as he made an end of speaking all these words that the ground did cleave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. So they and all that appertain unto them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perish from among the assembly. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. They, they said, lest the earth swallow us and fire came from the Lord and devoured the 250 men that offered incense. We're going to stop here for now. That's the first chapter. This whole story spent to chapter 18. But we're going to just stop here and uh, move on to um, the title of loyalty. Okay. We're going to just talk about loyalty today. The uh, the Torah portion reading of this week is about Dathan and Abiram and what they did to Moses. Korak, it's called the, the parish of Korak. Each portion of the Bible has a title. Um, like sometimes, not every version does that, but some of the version um, in a, I think it's NIV or, uh, some newer version, try to keep the titles of the original text, um, but I, I haven't paid attention to comp against Moses. So we heard we read and heard that Korah, Dathan, and Abiram are the trio that gathered together and um, instigated a revolt against Moses. They were able to corrupt 250 men with them. And that grieved the Lord. And he came with a judgment against them. Loyalty, what is the word loyalty means? Loyalty is a strong feeling of support of allegiance. Loyalty um, and allegiance actually can, can actually mean, mean the same thing. Uh, loyalty in general term signifies a person devotion or sentiment of attachment to a particular object, which may be another person or group of person, an ideal, a duty, or a cause. This is um, uh, 
sorry about that. I forgot the, um, that it will come to me, the dictionary, but it's a dictionary definition. I did not put the reference down. Loyalty turns into, it's an English uh, version, English, English version dictionary. I'm, it's gonna come to me. Loyalty turns into fanaticism when it um, becomes wild and unreasoning and into resignation when it displays the characteristic of reluctant acceptance. Loyalty has an important social function only by an individual's willingness in cooperation with others to invest intellectual and moral resources generously and wholeheartedly in a group, in a group, it's a Cambridge Dictionary, thank you. So um, I stop here to just put it in a simple term and a shorter um, term, loyalty, is devotion, loyalty is um, allegiance, loyalty is being found of with something that you can call a covenant. It's kind of a covenant. It's if you if you look at if you look a little deeper, loyalty can be equate, equated to covenant. It's a covenantal appreciation. Allegiance also, when we go to the definition, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, allegiance means loyalty and support for a ruler, a country, a group, or belief. So if we want to go with that, let's go a little further. Collins English Dictionary defines it as your allegiance is your support for a loyalty to a particular group person or belief. Marion Webster defines it as devotion or loyalty to a person, group or cause, okay? So literally allegiance and loyalty are one in the same. If we look at all the, the um, meaning and um, dictionary descriptions of the two words, the two terminologies. So what are we are looking here? is a repetition of something. It says, maybe uh, attachment, that's the key word, attachment to a particular person, group, a deal, which, is, we could, which can also be equated to ideology, okay? Ideology, ideal, ideology, or duty or cause, okay? And um, the Cambridge continue when it comes to allegiance, now it's talking about support for a ruler, a country, a group, or belief. So belief is the same as ideology. Um, ruler is the same as, you know, um, leader, uh, someone who is on, on, on the, on, in charge, country is a nation, group could be a group of a tribal group. It could be a, you know, those, um, the uh, um, Freemason, okay? So this kind of people, they have, they have the, the um, how do they call that? The pledge the initiation, the pledge, the belief, the mantra. Um, and once one person goes through all of that, the person becomes part of them with an allegiance, with an allegiance. And it's an attachment, it's a devotion, okay? It's a loyalty. So when you become American, you pledge allegiance to the flag of America. When you go to the military, you pledge allegiance to America, pledge allegiance to the flag. When you work for the government, you pledge allegiance to, when you go to the Peace Corps, all of this, you pledge allegiance. Why? Because you have to pledge your devotion, your hardcore um, protection 
of that cause of that ideal ideology okay the american ideology wheresoever an american stands the an american present, uh, represent that ideology and it's is a I put a quote but that's pretty much what america is known the whole world for is democracy the beacon of democracy the but at the end of it when you look through true, true democracy is not really democracy okay but america is known as being the beacon of democracy so when you become an american citizen you pledge allegiance to that to defend that democracy to defend that freedom okay the ego is the emblem of freedom is freedom and in our um in the um anthem oh say can you see the word when you read the word in there is 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 speaking and giving glory to the flag for the battle that the 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 um the brave has won why did the brave fail why did the brave um got killed why did the brave fail they fell because they were fighting for who they were fighting for dear lady freedom lady freedom she has a big statue in new york it's called the statue of liberty this is what america is known for freedom and democracy so when you become an american citizen you pledge allegiance to that when you go to the military you pledge allegiance to defend the nation against all enemy against all enemy of freedom and democracy. So that's what allegiance and uh, loyalty means. Now, in, a, in, the, um, in the, the, the Bible passage talking about Korah, Adit, and Abiram, these are three men and they were not just, um, they were not just uh, citizens, okay? They were actually members of the leadership of Moses. They were actually member, they were uh, called the princes of the tribe. They were the leaders representing the tribes. Okay. So literally, there should have been the leadership that was behind Moses that should have understood the mission of Moses, what Moses, what God sent Moses to do, and what Moses was doing and what was happening. They should have understood the season of what God was doing with the whole nation of Israel moving one territory to the other. You see, but they revolt. They revolted, totally showing a complete lack of understanding the mission of Moses, the position of Moses, the leadership of Moses, the, the, um, the office that God has has uh, uh, ordained Moses to occupy. This is what they show. They even told Moses in verse, uh, in verse, I don't remember, let me see. They told Moses that you took us from the land of, I think 13. Okay. Uh, Numbers chapter 16, verse 13. Is, is it a small thing? So Abiram, let's go to 12. And Moshe sent to call Datham and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, the two of them said, they refused to come. Eh? And th this is what they say when they refuse to come or before they say no. <laughs> okay. They say, we will not come. That's what they say. And then they say, is it a small thing that thou has brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey? Now, you, this, this alone should make, make you say, what? Were you not the slave in Egypt? Were you not the one slug in Egypt? Were you not the one that, that said, your, um, we will not even give you straw anymore. You will go cut your own straw gather your own material to come and do the bricks. Because before we were even giving you material, now you're gonna go fetch your own material. Were you not that in that situation? 
and, and Moses is taking you to the land of milk and honey. Now you rise up against Moses and you call Egypt the land of milk and honey. <laughs> is it not a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, but thou must needs make thyself also a prince over us. Now you are going to comment, you, are you going to now establish yourself as a ruler over us, a prince meaning, meaning like uh, a king, you see? A prince meaning a king, meaning that they have to bow to him. They have to obey him. They have to, to do his bidding. Meaning a leader that you can't challenge, a leader that you cannot question. That's what a prince means. He equates to royalty. He equates to someone who is sitting in a position and question and challenge. Whatsoever he says, go. That's what they were saying to him. Moreover, that has not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey nor giving us an inheritance of fields and vineyard. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come, come up. So the flat out refuse Moses' bidding. Moses called them. They say they're not coming. You took us from a land of milk and honey to take us, to bring us into, into this wilderness. Now you are going to... Um, so you have established yourself over us now like a prince and whatsoever you said to do, we should jump and do it. Who are you? Who are you? You are taking too much over you. So here, these leaders that were supposed to be the one to understand, the one to understand the mission and the vision the calling of God and the covenant that God has established between them and him. They're supposed to be the leaders to help Moses teach all of these precepts to the families, to the, the clan, to the tribes. But rather they are the one to rebel against Moses. And by doing that, they brought with them 250 other leaders that were in lower ranking them, than them. You see? So these 250 men came along with them to rebel against Moses. So God came and God judged them. God came and God sentenced them to death death by the earth swallowing them. And this is pr pretty much what happened to them. You see? So after the three of them and their families got swallowed by the earth, the other 250 were, the, were, were fleeing after saying all these things against Moses and the Lord brought fire to consume them. I can't imagine, can you imagine being in, in, in the wilderness First of all, <laughs> living through the 10 plagues, that's alone. Then crossing the massive wall of, of water, tending one side to the other. Then you turn around. Then you see these two masses of water coming together, swallowing the enemy. Then you start walking days, weeks, months and camping, being fed by a supernatural food and meat. Your shoes and your clothes, the Bible writes, never worn out. Water is coming out of a rock. I mean, these people were just living wonders after wonders, miracle after miracle, a huge tower of smoke leading you in the morning and a stone, a rock following you guiding you a, a stone is moving in itself nobody is carrying that stone you are moving a stone is moving with you and then you see a, <laughs> a tower of smoke in a day a tower of fire in a night the manna is falling 
the quail are falling. All of this, you don't farm, you don't hunt, you don't fish, but you are eating. And when you eat, you are not hungry. And your, your clothes are not worn, in, worn you, they, they don't wear out. Your shoes are the same. Ah, what kind of God be this? What kind of God be this? But the limitation of our flesh, the limitation of our humanity, has one foot, not far from Satan. Has one foot, not far from sin. Has one foot, not far from the deception of the evil one. God does, he does, and redoes. <laughs> he shows us, shows us, and shows us again <laughs> yet our so 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 sinful flesh cannot be faithful cannot be loyal we are one bite away from crying out from for meat we are one bite away from for crying out for rice we are one cup away from crying out for water when our water jug was overflowing yesterday, today we will throw ourselves on the floor if we don't see a drop of water. Loyalty. Loyalty. They turn around. You forgot all the plague you survived. You forgot the Red Sea. You forgot all that God has done and shown himself. Now, they're rising against Moses saying, who established you over us? Now you have established yourself as a prince, as a king, that what you're going to do or say, we are supposed to just jump and, 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 and do your bidding without questioning. Who are you, Moses? We are also anointed. We, we did not go to the next um, um chapter but um the whole these are three chapters of this week so if you have time read the Dayton and abiram um chapter 16 to 18 of numbers this is um what we studying this week so at, at the uh, further chapter 17 and 18 the bible recount that uh he's even asking moses uh, we also, he's even telling Moses that we are also anointed. We are also leaders. You are not the only one that God established as leader. We also are leaders and princes of our tribe. We are also all anointed. Does this ring a bell to you in churches today where people rise up against the pastor, against uh, uh, church leadership? We all have the Holy Spirit. We all hear God. Who are you? Okay. So this is a reality in our time today. It's a reality in our church, in our con congregation, even in our families. Even in our families. So how do we deal with loyalty? Before we get there, I want us, I don't want it to be too long. I want us to, I want to bring it into practicality with our families where um, in the, the title I say loyalty, a two-way street, loyalty, a two-way street, because Moses gave his, gave his all to God for the people of Israel. He gave his all to God for his brethren. He gave his all to God for his people. Moses, we all know, has a temperament. So we know that if he wasn't that, he gave his, his, his covenant, his all to God for them. He could have left them a long time ago 
he could have left them a long time ago. He has he was negotiating with God that are you sure you want me? I don't, I don't, I'm not qualified. I don't want to do this. But because <laughs> Moses see two people fighting, he goes and killed one. He is a man of action. He's he is a man of reaction, rather. He reacts to things. So Moses wouldn't have laughed with, the, with his brethren. Oh, he wouldn't have laughed. He wouldn't have lasted. But it is Jehovah who was carrying Moses one issue of his people after the other. One issue of his people after the other. When they did the golden cup, he was so upset, he broke the first um, table. And that table, the um, um, Jewish literature are telling us that it was made of sapphire. It was made in heaven by God himself. It was a table of sapphire that uh, the commandment were written on that he gave to Moses for his people. And that's what Moses broke, you see. So when he broke the, the one that came from heaven, he told him, take the uh, two stones. So now Moses had to take two stones from the earth to write those commandments on, you see. So if it wasn't for God, Holding the hand of Moses, Moses could have left these uncircumcised, I mean, um, stiff neck rather, brethren that the Lord told him to lead. He could have left them in the middle of the wilderness and he took uh, Jethro, his father in law, his wife, Sephora, and his children, and said, You know what, uh, father in law, let's return to Midian. There, I could, I'm just going to take off your ship and we will leave every, uh, you know, at peace there. We were okay drinking the, the fresh milk of a cow in the morning. These people, I'm through with them. But it is God who kept him. Through disobedience, through disloyalty, through uh, nonsense. So Moses did his part. Now the other part, the, the other way, the second way of the street was the children of Israel to be loyal to him, therefore loyal to God. Each time they disobey Moses, it was God that were disobeying. It was a covenant that were disobeying. When he told us in a, uh, that the, your brother that you see Huh? You don't love. How can you love God that you don't see? This is what it is. Loyalty equates also to love. Loyalty actually transcends love. It's, it's, a little, it's one step over love because loyalty brings someone to have attachment that is long-lasting. Attachment that is difficult to break. And if you don't love somebody, if you don't have any sense of love or likingness or whatever, sometimes it's difficult to be loyal. That's why sometimes you see people, even when you, we talk to country, there are people who will die for America. And there are people who are ready to, to sell American intelligence to the Russian or to the Chinese without any heartbeats. It's the same thing in every congregation, even in families. You see, loyalty expresses a level of love. So now, the two ways function this way. When we saw the description, when we went over the description, it was saying that it's a attachment, appreciation, okay, to allegiance to a nation, a person, or a group. So you can see in, for instance, in a set of families, you can see children that have loyalty for the parents. Sometimes they don't understand what's going on, but they are trained into loyalty. 
sometimes you will see a child who is molested or beaten, he can tell on his parent. Because first of all, there is the natural love. The natural love the child has developed for the parent. The natural need to be protected by that parent, even though the parent is the cause of threat to that child. The parent is his first need of protection. It has to be explained to the child that what the child is going through is wrong, that the father and the mother is no longer loving them if they do that to them. So a child has to be literally trained to understand the separation of that parent being the natural protector to that parent becoming his villain, his enemy. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. So when a child has this, this level of loyalty to the parent, the parent needs to have also a loyalty to the child, where the parent protect the child at all costs, where the parent protect the child even if it, it hurts. Sometimes we are disloyal to our own children or our employees or our teammates. As a leader, as a parent, as a nation, for instance, when you see veterans coming from war, I know that Red P worked for the hospital of veterans for years. Some of them come back from war, the war that they went to fight to defend America, the war that they went, they left everything behind, they took their very soul, the breath that they're breathing that is the symbol of their life, they take that on the battlefield and they offer that to America and they go fight. When they are wounded, some of them are completely disabled. I have seen veterans coming and being homeless on the street. In a country like America, it's heartbroken. It's not that America doesn't have the means to take care of them. But why can we see American veterans that were loyal to the country being discarded by the country this way? It is wrong. So the, the two ways are not, are not respected here. All the promises that if you go, we will care for you, this and that. When they came back and they became disabled, the care was not 200%. They received a small stipend. They received some, some sort of care. Some of them, the money they receive is not enough to even buy them because, because they suffer post-traumatic disorder and they become mentally ill. Some of them have to take drug to be able to sleep, to be able to think straight. Otherwise, they hear voices that enable them to function. They hear voices that tell them to do something bad to somebody. And it's the drug they take that make, it them, make them sleep 18, 20 hours that keep them away from being violent, away from violence. So the money that they are receiving, they used to buy the drug. You see the vicious cycle? But the country leave them because now they are equated to a drug addict. That's loyalty that got broken in its, in its uh, uh, two-way communication, two-way functioning the country has to take care of those veterans 200% so that we don't see any veterans on the street as a homeless person. So in a family setting now, we see sometimes parents that are disloyal. We parents sometimes, we are disloyal. How are we disloyal? Sometimes we, we, you know, we chicken out of our responsibilities toward our children. 
some of us push them out of the house too early. Some of us um, um, don't tell them the truth. Some of us don't, don't uh, give them uh, all the teaching they're supposed to have received. Some of us are absentee parents. That we, we hide in our work, we are never home. Some of us, the children would rather we be home because when we are at home, we are, you know, a, a drill surgeon. We are always backing. We are always condemning, insulting, putting them down. Some of us, we don't know how to love. We don't know how to be patient with them. Some of us, all of that, we have given up our loyalty to them. You see? So the two-way street now of loyalty is broken. In a relationship, marital relationship, same thing. Our secret do not stay home. All the in-laws knows all the secret of the wife or of the husband. All the issues is, is outside. Even the intimate issues are outside. That's disloyalty. That's disloyalty. Some of us have said, don't tell. Before you finish the phone call, you hang up to say, don't tell. Three people know already. That's disloyalty. When I'm with somebody, I say something. When I'm without the person, I say something about the person. If you are in an organization, this is my workplace now. There's so many disloyalty in, in that place. You are in an organization, you set up something and then you treat one employee differently than the other. The rule apply to the rule apply to this person, but it does not apply to the other person. You see? That's dishonesty and disloyalty. So loyalty is a two-way street. We want our team member to be loyal to us as a leader. We want our children to be loyal to us as, as children, per, uh, as parents. We want our spouses to be loyal to us. We want the nation to be loyal to us, but we have to be loyal to the nation to our spouses, to our team members. We have to be loyal as well. I am a child, I am, I am a daughter and I hear and I'm outside in a, I have a, I have a story actually. When I was in university in Ivory Coast, I was, I was so expressive in my, uh, how do you call that? my ideologies and my, my thinking and all of that. As a, a law student, I did two years of law uh, and one year as a, as a working before I came to America. So as a student of law, we had our professor of constitution law who was a rebel. He was in the opposition. And at the time, the opposition was not that strong, but it was brewing, okay? And the IMF was putting pressure on the president, Ufobwain, the first president of the Ivory Coast. And this, um, this professor was part of the handful of scholars that decided to challenge the government. And just like the, you know, <laughs> This thing is not, it's a, it's a old, it's a old strategy. Just like the, um, how do you call that? Um, LGBTQ2, uh, um, you know, project or, or agenda decided to go into academia because when you hit academia, you hit young mind, you hit young, young people, young people become now the agent that is released in families. And you get more tracking like that instead of being in a, a try to be in the news, try to be to, to, to look for, you know, 
signature, go to the Congress. No, no, no. Go to the children. And that will take your cause. And that will fight their own household to propagate that agenda. That's what our professor did. So what he did is in um, school, all of us young, you know, high school graduate coming into university, he was teaching first year and second year. So the first two years of college of, of law, he was the teacher of, of constitutional law. Oh my God. That man came and he stirred us into rebellion. You could not get me to talk good about the government. So in the young leaders, uh, young girls, I was there holding my, 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 my banner. <laughs> so there was a conference of the women, the association of all the women of the party, the party of Ushkobain that was in power. They have the women section. So the president of the women of that party came to the university to meet the young girls of the university to get, you know, membership, get them to, to you know, to join and all of that. And guess who was in the group with a different agenda? Me, yours, dearly. Mm. I was in that amphitheater waiting for question and answer. So as soon as the president finished talking and she said question, <laughs> now we got to key and I, I stood up. <laughs> I stood up and I asked a question. The question I asked was in a line as this, is it obligatory for all girls to be part of this, um, of, of the uh, women's session of something in that, in that line? Is it mandatory? Is it obligatory? Can we not, can we, something like that. But I asked a question that pertained to the fact that I wasn't really um, impressed with the party of the women. I didn't want to be part of it, something like that. So the president answered the question and, and the meeting finished. I went to my dorm room. The Sunday, <laughs> The Sunday I went to my home parish to go to church. No, 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 no. That Sunday, my mom went to her home, to our home, my mom went to church. Yeah, that Sunday, my mom went to church. She was told, I think the meeting was Friday. She arrived Sunday, she was already informed of what her daughter was saying at the meeting of the women on campus. So I was already labeled and the, the message arrived at my mom on Sunday on campus, okay? So a week later, okay, a week later Saturday, I went home. I arrived home, my mom said, sit down, I need to talk to you. I sat down, she started telling me, in this country, <laughs> she berated me because I am showing signs of rebellion against the government. All of this, she went on and on and on. Now see, something that happened on campus on um, Friday or Thursday, that Sunday, my mom is, a, is, is, is aware of that. Do you think that this is a safe place? That's not a safe place. You see, that is, that is not loyalty because to me, if you want people to adhere to your ideology, you have to give people the security of the, of the, of the thought and of the mind. Because doing that is disloyalty to the youth. You see, you go and tell the parent of that youth that your child is having oppo op opposite um, thought or opposite um, uh, uh, ideology and it's a danger or is, you see what I'm trying to say here? So loyalty is two ways. Loyalty has to do with both parties 
having attachment to a cause that benefits them, to an ideology that is um, to the advantage of the same cause, to the advantage of the same cause. So if we are in the same church, we have to have a sense of loyalty. I have to know that something would not shock me and I'm trying to find out why. I have to be at peace knowing that loyalty is at home, is in church, is in, at, at work, is in the nation, and it's in the kingdom of God. I will stop here for now, for today, and open for questions. Any question, question, any contributions? Thank you, Mama, so much for this um, wonderful teaching. There's just a lot to learn, especially about the story of Moses, because when I read this story of Moses, um, this part when the children of Israel, they, they started rebelling and wanted to go back, it was just so uh, heart touching. And that's something that stood out to me because it just shows us how we easily forget the goodness of God. Like we have testimonies, we rejoice in those testimonies, then we forget about them so easily. And when we just face the least challenge, we start praying like God has never done anything good. That's right. It's a very common human trait that happens even to this day. Where That's right. You know, complaints. And if you really notice, you see that this actually delayed their way to the promised land because mm -hmm. complaints and they're not seeing the goodness. They're not spending time to praise God for the things that he's doing, the miracles, but they instead they magnify the, the little challenges that came their way. So um, my prayer is that we always magnify the goodness of the Lord and lean more on his goodness. Amen. 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 I have like two or three questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is, is loyalty um, related or is another uh, level of uh, ungratefulness? That is one. Uh, second question is, in the time of uh, like the children of Korah, time of Korah, the, the ground swallowed them. In the time of Ananias uh, uh, and Sapphira, they died because they were trying to be disloyal too. They were cheating the body of Christ. Now in this time where people are kind of, it's like, they are mastering loyalty, disloyal, disloyalty. They have even PhD on disloyalty. <laughs> <laughs> Since they seem not to sometimes take lesson from the first one and they go and they do more. Is there anything that you can teach us on what happened to a disloyal child of God like you? You're a believer, you go to church and everything, but you put in your heart that you will not obey or you will do only to your head or you will do. Can you teach us? Because people, I think, don't, don't, don't feel anything that God will do is why they behave that way. And the second question I forgot, is it a problem of character? That'd be the third question. Okay. I'm letting... uh -huh. So to ask the first question you say, um, actually, let's, let me, let me, the second question was, God is no longer doing um, the uh, judgment as raw as he did, you know, time old, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How do we, how do we know what happened to the people who are disloyal, okay? Now, 
The third question is, is it a matter of character? The first one was, uh, okay, let me answer this too. And then you will tell me the first one. I did not write it. I did not write the first one. Okay. Now let's start with the fact, the, your question to uh, the second question when you ask, God is no longer judging the um, the disloyal the way he was doing time old. How do we know? How how do we, how are people getting away with being disloyal? Okay. First of, first of all. I don't think God is not judging anymore. Okay, let's settle that. Secondly, because of what Christ did on the cross, because when we're looking at the Abiram, we were with Moses. But when we're looking at um, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, Jesus has rose and he left them. Yet Peter was able to judge them and they were killed. Because it was Peter who released the judgment on them. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? It was Peter who released judgment on them. Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and they got killed because he said it and it happened. Even uh, Peter was anointed to the point where everything that was coming out of the mouth of Peter was an execution. So it, 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 it was so powerful and raw that if it's good, good for you. If it's bad, bad for you. Remember, he judged that man with blindness. The man became blind. Was that him or was that Paul? Was Paul. It was Paul. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the apostles were powerful like that. So what I'm saying is it's the power of the judgment that they release against these people that were not behaving themselves. So even after grace came, because we are talking about grace here. Okay. Under grace, this judgment fell on the people that were misbehaving under grace, okay? Now, that's telling us that when the judgment comes out of the mouth, it, it will happen unless, because the Lord said, until your righteousness is full, you cannot judge another right unrighteousness. You cannot judge unrighteousness until your righteousness is full. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. So when we stand to judge disloyalty, we have to make sure that, first of all, it is disloyalty. Second of all, our own is, has been fulfilled. Our own has been fulfilled before we can judge that disloyalty or that unrighteousness. This is the reason why a lot of times we see things going on in a uh, congregation, in church environment, in, and it seems as if, is God not judging anymore? No, God is, God is, is, is judging in the balance. If I'm a liar, I cannot come and say, it's this person, that person lies. Where is this judgment going to go in front of God? No way. It's not going to go anywhere. But if I don't lie, and my duty daily is to make sure I am not lying, if I open my mouth to judge a liar, that can fall on the person. This is why we are not seeing, we, are not, we think we are not seeing so you are advising what? that we should judge them? I'm not advising. I'm, okay. I'm telling you because okay. you took two examples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You took two examples. You took the examples of 
of Dayton Abiram, and you took the example of Ananias. I'm situating you between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And we are comparing how come God was so fierce, raw, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. yeah, in judging iniquities, in judging misbehavior, in judging disloyalty compared to um, the new, compared to now, compared to now, where we don't see that people are suffering or we are suffering the waging, the wages of our sin. We don't see it raw, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. even in a time of Ananias and Sapphira. And I am telling you that I don't think that we are not suffering iniquities and everything. I think that it has to do with the provision of what's going on now. First, we have a grace that they did not have with Moses. Not, not the grace the way we understand. They had grace because it is by grace that God chose them in the Old Testament. Grace was there. Grace was there. But when it came to judging and attaining, uh, atoning for sins and all that, we did not have the same dynamic. When the Lord came, he did a job. He completed a job on the cross that changed the dynamic. So when we situate ourselves after the cross, Ananias and Sapphira are after the cross. How come they suffer this raw punishment? That's when I'm telling you that in the case after the cross, judgment is still there. Otherwise, we will not miss our, our salvation. We will not need to repent. We will not, no. We still need to do all of that. Work our salvation daily with fear and trembling because there's judgment. There's punishment. In the case, Peter stood and judged the situation. Peter stood and, and uh, rendered them accused. Even Paul told, told uh, one, of the, one of the workers that he gave them up to Satan. So there are, after the cross, situations where people were accused and received the judgment that they, that were bestowed upon them. In our case now, what I think I'm seeing, I still think that is judgment because the wages of sin is death, but Jesus gave us life as a gift from God. This is what we receive, you see? But in terms of someone coming to church lying and not falling in front of everybody dead, or someone be in the house cursing the senior pastor and they are not dead and they sleep, they wake up, they continue cursing. This has to do with everything that God, uh, uh, Jesus did on the cross and the provision that the blood has established and the fact that our righteousness has to be fulfilled before we can judge righteousness. This is the way I see it. This is the way I understand. Otherwise, I don't know how to explain the fact that people are not falling dead in, in church. Someone finished sleeping with the pastor. The person is singing in the choir. The pastor is holding the Bible preaching. How come? How come? And it continue year after year. How come? Pastor having two, three, four, five mistresses. Pastor raping girls in church and it's continue. How come? What's going on? This is what we have to look into. Are we the one that's standing to judge? Are we? Are our righteousness fulfilled? What is God doing these days? Is he not? Has he closed his eyes to iniquity? Has he closed his ears to sin? 
What is going on? To me, we have to work on our righteousness. If each person focuses it in own righteousness, we can turn to the Holy Spirit. We can turn to prayer and ask guidance in what's going on. But believe you me, people are not getting, we are all not getting away with murder, even in this time. It might look like it, but that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Because there are people that are experiencing the wages of sin as we speak. Though it doesn't look like it, but it is going on. It is going on. This is what I wanted to, to say with that. But the third one, character and all that, to me, it's, uh, it goes with the behavior. It is character, 100% character. It's 100% character. When, when salvation has not changed the character, when salvation has not done the transformative work of total um, change, total redemption, total revival. It's revival that brings about change. It's revival. Salvation in itself does not bring change. It's revival that brings change because revival is the fire that is ignited inside the person's soul that the person carry a flame. It is that flame that burns into the person, that consumes the old person and uh, brings forth the new person. It is revival. Without revival, salvation alone is not enough to change the person. Salvation alone is not enough to change the person. Because there's one thing that the Bible is telling us is there is an inheritance to be received after we are saved. And to receive that inheritance, it requires a set of character, a set of behavior that follows our salvation. We don't work to receive the salvation, but once we receive the salvation, we have to work to get the inheritance, two different things. So it is in the working of the inheritance of receiving the crown, receiving the inheritance, that's when revival is effective. That's where we get the crown. It's a revival that brings the crown. It's a revival that brings the inheritance. The overcomer will be clothed with white garment. Revelation says that's what he told us in Revelation. What are we overcoming? We're overcoming the works of the devil. We're overcoming by the, the word of our testimony. What is that word of the testimony? It's not just, oh, um, I was sick and Jesus healed me. That's not the word of the testimony. Uh -huh. The testimony is a witness. We stand as a witness body, soul, and spirit for the finished work of Christ in our lives. When we stand, our, the testimony that we carry is the complete change of our character. It's the complete identity of the person that we're supposed to be. Loyal to the core. How are we loyal to the precept of God, to the word of God, to the, the kingdom? by being totally transformed from the old kingdom into his kingdom, from the darkness into his marvelous light. So that happens only with revival because it's a revival fire that gives us a testimony, gives us a testimony that overcome the work of darkness, that destroy the work of Satan in our lives. So that's what I wanted to, to say. I hope I answered the question.
Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay. All right. So with that, we're going to pray that the Lord help us um and gives us uh, strength that is a revival fire burns inside of us to continually transform us into his witness into his witnesses into the testimony that we are anybody has any um prayer point Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for all that you do. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father. We say, make us loyal. Loyal to your word. Loyal to the covenant. Loyal to your name. Loyal to the identity you gave to us. Loyal to the precepts that are laid before us. Sometimes it's hard. To follow. Sometimes it's hard to obey. Sometimes it's hard to yield. But Father, because of loyalty, we want to yield to you. Because of loyalty, we do not want to disobey. Because of allegiance, we want to stay firm and uphold the principle, the precept, the word, the commandment, the laws of the kingdom. Father, transform our heart to be totally sold out, transform our heart, O Lord. Please let us pray together. Let us pray together. You said in your word, the just fall seven times. The just fall seven times. Yet you bring just back. Yes, you rise up. Father, thank you, Sandra Oh, have mercy, oh Lord. Because before we judge our righteousness, Rabba, <laughs> <laughs> 
Righteousness before we can judge our we cannot judge gossip about us. We gossip ourselves about others. We cannot judge lying if lying. We cannot judge. Father, before we judge our righteousness. We cannot judge this narrative Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Nadesh, you have a question? No, Rev D. Thank okay. okay. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you so much. Thank God. Amen. 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 Do we have any prayer point? If not, we can close. Today, 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 today. 
Reb P, would you please pray for us to close for us? Sure, sure. Father God, I thank you for the grace to hear this lesson, Father. Father, you brought it because it's a time and season where a lot of heart, O oh Lord, are uh, manipulated by the enemy, Father. Father, we pray for grace to always see you first and not us. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and grace. We pray that as we have learned, Father, we apply your advice and we have a heart to come to you every time. We will watch and pray, O oh Lord, for the enemy not to use us, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. We bless the teacher and we bless the inspiration that you have given. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can bless everyone with the blood of Jesus, your home. Jesus. Amen. Have all the prayers and the word with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Jesus. Amen. Get prepared for next watch. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bye bye. Good night. It must Amen. be very late with you, Nadesh. <laughs> no, it's 8 25. We're at the same time. Oh, so. where are you? Pittsburgh. Why? Ah, I keep thinking you are in Europe. <laughs> no, no, I was there. <laughs> you are in Pennsylvania where my son is. Pittsburgh, oh. this is where he is. <laughs> wow, I am in Pittsburgh. Yes. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm glad. I'm glad. I will let you know when I'm coming there. Oh, yeah, I'll yes, let you know. Please do. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Have a good night, rather. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.